SBC Media. Brazil, a global economic powerhouse, deeply passionate about sports, and now home to one of the hottest markets in gaming. And we're giving it the full SBC treatment. Join industry leaders, market experts, and all the major players in the country for three days of content, exhibition, and epic networking at the first ever SBC Summit Rio. SBC Leaders connects the gambling industry's top tier operators and associations to share the best ideas, collaborate on solving the biggest issues, and push innovation throughout the betting and gaming industry. If you're an operator and want to join the discussion, visit sbcleaders.com for more information. Earlier this month, the Chamber of Deputies for the Argentine province of Santa Fe approved the regulatory project for online gaming and sports betting. Following a day of debate, which saw 38 votes in favour and six against, this regulation, promoted by Deputy Fabian Bastia and first introduced by his party colleague Marcelo Gonzalez, has now been sent to the Senate in order to obtain full approval. Yet, what does this regulatory project include? What impacts will it have if approved by the Senate? And how does it compare to Argentina's neighbours, Brazil, who are currently going through a, a kind of similar process you might be aware of it? And this will be the topic to kickstart the week on iGaming Daily, where I, your host, James Ross, am joined by Fernando Knott and Isadora Macanche. How are you both doing? Are you okay? Well, doing great. Doing great. Great to be back. I, I think I haven't been on the podcast for like two weeks already. I They had me hosting, you had me hosting the podcast, and then you didn't call me again. What's what's up with that? Uh, I just didn't want to hear your voice again. Okay. I, needed a, I needed a break from you, Fernando. I really did. I just think you're scared. I, I might take your, your position, man. That was it. I was shaking. I was actually shaking with fear that you'd take over my role. But no, I'd, I'd seen you too much over that period of time. So I thought I need a bit of a Fernando break. And now I'm getting Fernando withdrawal symptoms, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I bet you are. <laughs> oh, it's, you know, it's good to have you back on, Fernando. And Isadora, you okay? You're going to be I'm as okay. sassy as Fernando? <laughs> I'm, I'm just really tired. I'm. I'm like refurbishing my house. I know Fer just moved in to his new place, so it's a bit chaotic as well. Here it's a nightmare, but I'm just focusing on the results. They're going to be very nice. So apart from that, I'm great. Thank you, James. No, it's fine. O- off air before we uh, before we actually went live, Isadora mentioned that she's going to get a house painted, but the painters have pushed back the time of actually doing it because it's raining in Brazil. It's raining, so they've delayed it. And I'm just like, as an English person who's <laughs> has to do with the rain. Like, you could never paint in, in England, India. right? Never. Uh, no. I'm actually I'm tempted to go to a managing director and be like, <laughs> oh, it's raining today. I can't really do any work. I'm going to have to push it back until the sun comes out. Um, but hopefully the painters don't knock on while we're doing the podcast. It's an interesting one today. And it, it's something I don't have that much experience with and that's why i've brought used to onto the show to kind of go a bit more in depth with it and fernando if i don't have that much experience with this some of the listeners might not as well so can you just provide us with a bit more of a detailed breakdown of this uh santa fe project a regulatory project yeah sure to begin with we need to go back to the the covid pandemic and the the quarantine Yeah. yeah yeah guys stay home (laughs) <laughs> wear your face mask and everything uh but now um i mean uh, let's um let's think of what happened in santa fe by that time when governor omar perotti awarded the licenses directly to the three land-based operators that were that are authorized in the province uh, through a decree like they weren't able to operate their land-based operations on they awarded licenses for online gaming to Casino Puerto Santa Fe, City Center, and Casino Melinque, which are the three companies that are actually authorized to operate land-based um, casinos. And after that, they were able to operate also the online gaming operations. And sorry, I'm using the word operate so much. But there were several claims actually against this decree because, of course, it was those were mainly from the opposition parties. The opposition parties' jobs are to oppose things, so that makes complete sense. So they criticize the decision and and say, okay, so this was a COVID-related decree, 
COVID is gone now, or not entirely gone, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're over the quarantine phase, uh, the, the lockdown phase, um, and or we are already having the, the land-based operations fully working by now. So we can't have this um, this segment, the online gaming segment, operating uh, through a decree. We need to have a legislation in place. We need to have a, a bill uh, debated by the by the Congress, by the local Congress, and then passed an, uh, a proper uh, legislation enforced to have online gaming regulated in the in the province and that's is, this is why they are pushing the bill to legalize all forms of online gambling except for lottery games and other types of games with uh, physical draws um and, and the bill what's par- particular about this bill is that it will it will allow land based casinos like they already do right they are already operating but it will it will give them the three companies i mentioned already they will give them a license that will last, will last um, as long as their land-based permit. This means that when their land-based uh, casino license expires, uh, so will its online license um, that will expire as well. So they will have to like um, go through the process at the same time. Um, and also um, what's very unique, I think, about this uh, specific regulation proposed is that it will open another door to the local regulator. It will give it the opportunity to to actually launch its online gaming platform, which is I I'm, okay. can't I can't think of another province that has decided to do something like that. And so the Caja de Asistencia Social Loteria de Santa Fe, which is the name of the regulator, uh, which we will call Lottery of Santa Fe to to make it easier. Um, Lottery of Santa Fe will be able to either develop its own business, like they will hire like a, a, a development team and programmers and whatever, and they will develop their own their own platform, or they can uh, open a licitation to award the business to a third party. So, should they not develop their own business within 180 days, which is let me, help me with this, it's like six months. Yeah, six months. something like that. Uh, about six months uh, within the, the the enforcement of the legislation. Once it's passed, uh, if they don't develop their own platform by then, they will have to automatically uh, start a licitation to to award it to a third party. So this is pretty much what's going on in Santa Fe right now. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll jump back on a few things, but I just want to stick on the uh, the regulator setting up their own platform. What, what's what's the benefit of this? Like, again, I, I you've mentioned it that you've not seen it in any other provinces, and I may be wrong here, so don't take this as gospel truth. But I don't really know of or remember any in Europe that actually have their own platform. These regulators. So, w- what's the advantage of this for Santa Fe? If they mentioned this, well, I I haven't read anything coming straight from them, but we can. Uh, do our own or bring up our own conclusions or our, our own thoughts. And I think this is very important because, uh, or it's a bit, pretty big, big deal because um, if, when you have third parties or the private sector operating um, their own platforms, you get the tax money, right? You get uh, a certain fee or, or, or just part of the money they can um, they can generate from their operations and being a state owned um platform they will they would be able because we still have to wait and see if they actually develop it but if they do they will have the full control of that money right um, i mean of course most of the money will go to keep the platform running keep the operation going but i think that having that um, revenue source for the state, state coffers, it will be pretty big for, for Santa Fe. But then again, I'm not so sure they will actually use this, this card. And I think they might actually rather go with the, with the licitation and, and award the, uh, the business to a third party. Yeah, I kind of hope it's the former. I think it would be really interesting. And it might say, who knows, Santa Fe might set a precedent for. Others across the globe, other regulators across the globe to actually set up their own platform. And you, you mentioned taxation, and I think let's dive into 
how that works with this regulatory project in Santa Fe. And then we could bring this Adora in to kind of do some comparisons because in a previous episode, we broke down kind of Brazil's regulatory taxation um, distribution. So for hitters with Santa Fe taxations and ESA, once it's finished, let's do some comparisons to different markets. Well, to begin, be, to begin with, uh, we didn't mention that this bill actually was approved by the Chamber of Deputies, so it still needs to go through the Senate of Santa Fe and then be signed by the governor to, to be enforced. So at the Chamber of Deputies, they set a 15% tax on GGR, on gross gaming revenue. That's 5% higher than the current 10% they pay. So um, they would go from paying 10%, which was set uh, by the decree that was signed by the governor during during COVID, and they would start paying 5% more to go to uh, 15% tax on GGR. However, the local Congress will soon debate the 2024 budget law for, for next year, like the whole budget for the province, not only online gaming, of course, but the whole budget for the province. So there might be new specifics about this because the bill wasn't actually that specific uh about uh taxation rather than saying other than saying um okay it's a minimum 15 percent tax on ggr so it's a minimum they set up the minimum so it can be 15 it can be 16 it can be 30 i mean if it's 30 probably no one will operate but <laughs> you know what i mean um and comparing with other with other markets, um, tax collection has increased by 15.5% in the city of Buenos Aires uh, since it was regulated. So the Santa Fe government is expecting this to, to really help uh, state coffers. But then again, the city of Buenos Aires has lower taxation. They have a 10% tax on net income, not gross, uh, and a $100,000 uh, yearly fee. So compared to a 15% tax uh, on GGR, it seems like pocket change almost. But then again, Buenos Aires is a bigger market, even though it has a lower population or fewer people live in Buenos Aires. But it's the capital of the city. Everyone is like um, very deep into the internet and, and using the, the all the, the the offer, the offering that a, a, a technology provides. So to compare it with a more similar market, Cordoba, which is just uh, to the west of Santa Fe, has just authorized four licensed companies that will operate uh, online gaming in the province. Um, like I said, Cordoba is right next to Santa Fe, and now Betson, Playset, B Play, and Jugadon. Um, we'll start working in the province many months, actually, uh, after the, the regulation passed in Cordoba. Cordoba actually passed regulation a while ago, but they still hadn't awarded the license. Like they, they needed to sign the, the, the contract uh, to, to, to actually let the, these companies operate. Um, and in Cordoba, the, the tax regime charges a 10% fee on GGR, which is 5% lower than Santa Fe or the same as they are charging now. But since the bill sets the minimum 15% tax on GGR, that's um, that's definitely going to be higher than Cordoba. And we need to wait and see now what we have to wait and see everywhere, right? Uh, we were talking about this with Isa last week. Wait and see is pretty much the motto of every Latin American market. But... Um, we have to wait and see if they actually go with 15%, if they go higher, if they actually amend this and and go lower. Uh, because if you go too high, you might harm the market. It might be, it might be harmful, harmful. So they have to be really careful with the taxation because they want to get the, the tax revenue. But if you go way too high, you might get the opposite reaction. And to put it in, in perspective and going to Brazil, the Senate has managed to lower actually the tax, considering all these all these things I'm mentioning, and they have lowered the tax proposed to a 12% on GGR. So Santa Fe will have a higher tax on on GGR than than Brazil would. So here in Brazil, we're doing like an opposite way. We started with a very high taxation, 18% on GGR. And now we are on the 12% GGR, so it's like completely like the other way around that uh, <laughs> Argentina is doing. So um, 
Yeah, it started very high, 18% on DTR operators didn't like it. So um, the players didn't like it as well because the taxation on winnings was very high too. It was 30% on top of winnings that are up 2,112 BRL. Right now, they change it to 15%, so they cut by half. Um, so I think comparing both, it's better to reduce than hanging it up because we know that how operators, especially like entrepreneurs who you know, have that company, like when you have too much taxation, you tend to not want to operate in that market or offer even less than we were offering before do it to the, the amount that we'll have to pay to the government. So, yeah, like, well, we just changed. And it was good, although it's very hard to get a final approval because they keep delaying the vote on the Senate. Um, really, it's just they keep delaying it. I don't think we're going to see an approval of the Chamber of Deputies, maybe like even this year, because they will have the legislative recessed we recess very soon until next year. I don't think they will vote uh, to send to Lula and then sanction it before the end of the year. I don't think we're going to see a regulated market this year. Maybe January, hopefully. I was hoping Lula would give me a great Christmas present, but just let me down. He's just let me down. <laughs> well, let, let's jump back to uh, Santa Fe and we'll come back to some Brazilian updates a little bit later because. When you introduce a regulated market, you then have that kind of conflict. Well, not a conflict. You're combating against a grey market that already exists. And I know Brazil, you've already had a grey market. You've, you've got a grey market that you need to overturn to make it regulated. Santa Fe, what's the grey market like there? Is there been any reaction in terms of this regulated market and how to combat the already existing gray market i mean they always say that in order to fight the the gray market or the illegal market you have to to go out and regulate but we actually saw martin garcia santishan the president of the lottery of buenos aires in svc summit latin america 2023 saying that actually after regulating in buenos aires the the illegal market actually rose like the activity increased really he said that um of course he probably has like better better intel than we do um like you would think it would be the other way he, he, but i feel like um people being aware that there's an online gambling market makes them go into their computer or onto their computers and and looking up online betting and maybe if you don't do the the proper campaign for for letting people know which are the the regulated websites they might end up betting on a on an illegal market so i think um there's there's a lot of work to do there's uh, not much about the um, combating the 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 gray market or the illegal market in the in this bill but they will need to enforce some proper proper tools to fight it because like we said if if the illegal market increases with regulation you need to do proper information campaigns to let people know okay you need to bet on these websites because maybe they pay you later than the other ones or maybe uh, you need to go to kyc processes that are maybe sometimes a little bit uh tedious um but then again you have the security that anything happens should anything happen you will have the the government uh, backing you up and that won't happen if you bet on a website that's not regulated right there's many big unregulated websites being advertised on social media by many big influencers i know this is a big topic in brazil uh, but in argentina it's happening as well so they need to actually tackle this issue because many big and i'm when i say big i say really big influencers that have many, many followers and are being uh, watched on YouTube or, or Twitch, but they really need to tackle this issue because they are, I'm, there's one specific website that's being advertised. It's a big company. Um, you all know it already, but I won't name it either. <laughs> so there's a, one particular company that's investing a lot of money in advertising through influencers. So they really need to tackle that. And of course, um, 
um, conduct a proper information campaigns to actually let people know, okay, you need to bet on these websites in order to be to be safe and in order to contribute to state coffers because it's not only the, the safety of the player, but also um, getting the industry to to pay back to the to the state to the and to the community um, and that only happens with the regulated sector create a nice little segue into the question that i want to ask you Sador. it's going to be about advertising celebrities athletes in brazil because you've got a bit of an update in there but just to round off santa fe this is going to the senate for to attain full approval when can we expect that senate vote i think it might come before um or sometime in the next few weeks, they want to rush this bill. They actually introduced it on a Tuesday and voted it on a Wednesday. So they are rushing it. So probably going to see some some updates in the in the next few days. Perfect. At least Fabian Bastia can offer us a Christmas gift unlike Lula. Uh, <laughs> but let's 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 jump onto the update you've got regarding advertising with celebrities and athletes as the door in Brazil. What's happened? Well, um, a couple of months ago, the deputy Ricardo Aires um, filled up, actually sent uh, a bill asking to ban or to limit athletes, uh, influencers, and famous people from promoting gambling, the online especially, because we have seen an increase of promotion, uh, of gambling promotion. Uh, amongst influencers, digital influencers on Instagram here in Brazil. And uh, his project, actually, actually his bill was approved last week by the Deputies Communication Committee. Uh, okay, like this bill has to be approved by other two commissions as well. Like it's not just this one. So we have to, once again, wait and see what they're going to do. <laughs> but um, it's causing a bit of a fuss, uh, actually, because what I see here, that's my personal opinion on this. Um, they approved this bill. Uh, the, the, the bill says that athletes cannot in any way uh, promote gambling and even like be, be sponsored by uh, a sports betting site or an operator. So, but uh, influencers and famous people, they need to have limitations and they need to, to um, follow rules in, in order to, to be able to, to promote gambling online, you know, which is good. I believe this is good. We have to follow rules because what we, what we are seeing right now is influencers promising that you're going to uh, win a lot of money, that this new platform is paying a lot of money. They say exactly like that. New platform. It's it's paying a lot of money. Go and register. It's only three BRL, five BRL, ten BRL deposit, and you can play. And then look how much money you're making. I would never make this amount of money in one day of work. So it's it's really problematic what we see, like regarding the 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 message. You know, like the the core message that they are uh, saying uh, to to their followers. So this is good, but uh, I don't believe that banning athletes from promoting gambling or like being sponsored by sports betting sites uh, is a very great move because this will lead um, to maybe banning sports club uh, sports clubs to to get to being promoted as well because it's so part of the same package you know like if you cannot uh, if you cannot sponsor a player one day you might not be able to sponsor a football club as well because they're all yeah, part of precedence. right yeah exactly so um i don't think this is good but it's but i think the major problem that we see here and i've been like digging a bit uh in social media especially because i talk about that on my instagram as well uh we see that deputies and senators and and even the influencers who promote gambling don't know what they're talking about. So, um, like, Ricardo Aires, is the deputy. He published on his Instagram, and the title of his post was Goodbye, Little Tiger Game. He is referring to the Fortune Tiger uh, slot machine by PGSoft because the influencers are promoting this, the, this PGSoft uh, slot but the problem is not the game because PG Soft is, Soft is a very well, well established company, licensed, regulated, has certificates, and it was um, 
So it's a legal company doing a, a very nice game to like again, it's a matter of luck and uh, luck and unluck game. Like you can win and you can lose, but um, they don't understand. They don't understand that the, what the influencers are doing is that they are promoting illegal platforms. A platform that was just launched yesterday. That you have. Uh, they don't have like a registration. They don't have any license. They don't have anything. And if it's based in Brazil, and they cannot do that, like our law doesn't allow um, websites, operator sites to be based in Brazil. You have to be based outside. And it has to be legal outside, like overseas, to be able to, to have Brazilian players. And this platform that they are promoting, the influencers are promoting, are not even legalized. They don't even have a, a registration number. So um, I think that our deputies and senators need to understand what is the industry before saying that uh, the game is the problem. The game is not the problem. The problem is how people promote it, how, where the game is going to be available for the players, not the game itself. So it's, um, it's quite sad, actually, to see this because, like, the, the, the bill... Uh, the sports betting bill was delayed again in the Senate to be voted on this week because of online games, because they don't they don't want to regulate online games. And online games are the biggest part of the the revenue of the sites. So it's again wait and see what they're gonna do. Hopefully they're gonna vote this week and send back to the Chamber of Deputies for final vote and then be able to send to Lula, who will have fifteen working days so it's not going to be this year <laughs> 15 working days to to sanction it or to even veto it he can veto it so yeah See, i think you've raised another a great topic which we really should delve into on a future podcast because there's so much attention not just in brazil and not even just in latin america in general but across europe as well regarding advertising and the use of celebrities athletes and actually if you think about it they're they're not the main concern now not in the modern age influencers social media influencers have so much as their name suggests influence on people and they are they're not as educated as they should be some of them are i'm not i won't pigeonhole everyone into the same box but there are some out there who will just look at the money and look at the digits that they can get into their bank account and have no concern, have no worries of the message that they're, that they're throwing out there. And I think we do need to have a, a bigger discussion, a wider discussion with the Brazilian perspective. Fernando will come back with the Latin American perspective, and we'll get some from the European side of things as well and kind of just delve into influences in general and their growing influence. Sorry for influence overload there. Um, on the gambling market but uh, annoyingly that's actually all we've got time for today so i'm going to round this up fernando thank you for talking us through everything that's happened in the santa fe we'll keep an eye out if that's when that gets approved by the senate and we may even have another episode where we give you an update of what's happened if they've vetoed it if it's gone back for some suggestions or if they've approved it isa thank you for that very well i, I won't say a brief update on brazil because it was quite an in-depth interesting one but obviously lula's not accepted anything yet because he's still waiting he could veto it so we're not getting a christmas gift this year from brazil but hopefully there'll be some updates in the new year apart from that any topics that we've discussed in today's podcast i'll leave links in the description below for the listeners to go and read more about it on spc not to see us and spc not to see us brazil but apart from that i've been james ross i've been joined by fernando not isadora mccanche thank you for listening and tune in tomorrow for the next episode of our gaming daily thank you and goodbye SBC Media.